Well, it's Valentine's Day, assuming that you're one of those fine folks who jumps on my videos right when I upload them, and that means it's time to talk about love. Not real love, of course, we wouldn't be anime fans if we knew what that felt like, but we can at least appreciate the artistic portrayal of fake love in anime from, like, an academic standpoint, right? Anime has given us many wonderful stories about many different kinds of love, from the love between an infuriatingly indecisive teenage girl who misunderstands literally everything and a hot boy with emotional baggage, to the love between a wimpy, insecure loser and his energetic childhood friend and the standoffish student council president and the alien living in his house and the lunatic with a katana who's constantly trying to cut his nuts off and his teacher and his sister and his... Point is, there are a metric ton of great love stories in anime, be they romantic dramas or romantic comedies, and in the latter category, this winter has blessed us with the funniest rom-com since gamers, Kaguya-sama Love is War. A show about student council vice president Kaguya Shinomiya, a reserved rich girl who has fallen for student council president Miyuki Shirogane, a poor but academically brilliant young man, and the pair's ongoing efforts to trick each other into confessing to them first. Because love, as they say, is war. To confess is to show weakness and submit yourself to an eternal hell of carrying shopping bags, preparing two box lunches every morning, and doing all the work in sex. Or something. It's not entirely clear what Kaguya or Miyuki would actually lose in exchange for getting the relationship that they both want, but both of them are bound and determined to make sure that the other one loses it. And so ensues an intense struggle of wits, subterfuge, and psychological warfare. Kaguya-sama is getting attention for a lot of reasons. It's fantastic character designs, it's phenomenal voice acting, it's bomb-ass special ED, which could well be the new Hare Hare Yukai, although its regular ED also rocks and should not be ignored, but mostly people are getting attached because it's really, really funny. Like, Yazzie said she heard me Konosuba laughing while I was watching it, to give you some idea of this show's power level. And because the only thing that makes a joke funnier is explaining how it works, today I'd like to take a moment to dig into what makes Kaguya-sama such a laugh riot and such a compelling watch. And really, I think it comes down to the show's novel character dynamics. In a fascinating inversion of the usual rom-com trope where neither party makes a move because they're worried they'll be shot down, Kaguya and Miyuki both refuse to budge because they're absolutely convinced that the other is in love with them and is this close to making a move. Or at least they tell themselves they are. Both harbor serious doubts that the objects of their affection actually return their feelings, mostly as a result of the mind games they're constantly playing with each other, which only results in them doubling down on those mind games and burying their true feelings deeper and deeper in order to protect their pride. And those mind games do get pretty nutty, with Kaguya and Miyuki both having distinctive approaches to them. Miyuki is pretty good at thinking on his feet and concocting strategies on the fly, while Kaguya is a meticulous schemer who goes to ridiculous lengths using her family's wealth and influence in order to manipulate him. For example, in episode 2, Miyuki picks up a new smartphone out of necessity and sees an opportunity to push Kaguya into asking for his line ID. But what he doesn't realize is that Kaguya planted staff from her household all around his neighborhood in order to subconsciously prime him to buy that cell phone, all so that she could make him ask for her line ID. And what you don't realize is that the line corporation paid them a lot of money to include them in this storyline. And she tells herself that this is all just a ploy to wring a pseudo-confession out of him, but her inner monologue reveals that she really just wants to be able to text him at all hours of the day and talk to him all night. There are a lot of layers of deception and self-deception at play at any given moment in this show, and it kind of plays out like a twee romance reworking of Kaiji, complete with its own narrator who describes their Machiavellian scheming and neurotic worries with bombastic aplomb. The narrator's color commentary is a vital component of the show's comedy, as it helps to put us in the headspace of Kaguya and Miyuki. When you're a teenager, truly insignificant personal problems can seem like world-shaking disasters, and the over-the-top narration frames every one of their petty romantic squabbles in that light. The narrator delivers every line without a hint of irony, which only serves to highlight how ridiculous what he's saying really is. He is every bit as important a character to establishing the show's tone and sense of humor 
as any of the people we actually see on screen. But he's not alone in highlighting the absurdity of Kaguya and Miyuki's scheming. Chika Fujiwara exists mainly to throw a wrench into the works, obliviously wandering into the middle of their mental battlefields and blowing up their carefully laid schemes without a care. This element of chaos she injects into each storyline helps prevent the show from being too predictable, but she serves a more important role. Normally, her brand of happy-go-lucky Genki girl personality would mark her as a simple fool, but she's really the closest thing Kaguya-sama has to a Tsukomi or straight man character. She's certainly got the most important part of the role, the reactions, down. Huh? <laughs> This is something that I didn't quite grasp when writing my initial impressions of the show, and something that Kaguya doesn't seem to get either, but Chika's not dumb. In fact, she might well be the smartest person in the student council room. She speaks fluent French, and according to the wiki, four other languages. Also, she's an award-winning pianist, for what that's worth. But more importantly, in terms of the story, we've seen her deftly manipulate Kaguya's emotions to win a game, and in that cell phone storyline, she was the only one of the three to notice the practical problem that Kaguya's old flip phone couldn't run line in the first place. It's not that Chica's oblivious to her friend's mind games because she's too naive to participate, but rather that she doesn't see the point in being deceptive like that. She's generally speaking a kind and honest person who's upfront about her feelings and tends to get what she really wants because she's willing to just ask for it. Kaguya and Miyuki might have her beat in book smarts and social standing, but next to her they show the emotional intelligence of your average YouTube commenter. It doesn't matter how great you are at playing 5D chess if you can't recognize when you're playing Go Fish, or when you're not playing a competitive game at all and everybody could win if you just put your cards on the table. And in principle, Miyuki at least understands that idea. When he advises Tsubasa about his crush on Nagisa, he tells him, <laughs> Advice that proves to be absolutely correct. Subasa and Nagisa end up dating right after this conversation. Kaguya is pretty dense when it comes to feelings, but in the abstract, Miyuki gets it. He just doesn't know how to apply it to his own relationship woes. I'm pretty sure I've said this at least once before, but the central conceit of any good romantic comedy is that love turns even the smartest of people into idiots. And as a rule, watching idiots be idiots with the idiocy exaggerated for effect is funny. Rom-coms set themselves apart mainly through how their particular brands of idiocy present themselves. In Gamers, for instance, a total lack of self-esteem and an absurd inability on the part of everyone involved to just straight up ask the person they like what's going on creates a web of ludicrous misunderstandings that gets more and more complicated with each passing second. And in Ranma, the idiocy manifests itself as overblown shonen anime masculine posturing that leads to a lot of people getting hurt, sometimes emotionally but more often physically, for no good reason and often to great comedic effect. Pride is a motivating factor and underlying theme in most of these works, but Kaguya-sama really pushes it to the forefront. And it also does a good job of establishing why extreme pride would be such an essential facet of its lead's worldview. Kaguya was born into extreme wealth, with her life planned out for her from day one. Her success is all but guaranteed, as long as she earns it. And the trade-off for the silver spoon she was born with is that every action she takes reflects on the Shinomiya Zaibatsu. She has to protect her image for the sake of her family and their company. Miyuki, meanwhile, was born with nothing and had to claw his way up from the bottom to earn a scholarship at a prestigious hoity-toity prep school. He works long hours to keep his grades up and maintain appearances as a cool and capable genius, partly because he's got a big ego and likes the attention, but also because he's risen above his station, and to stay there, he has to convince everyone around him, and himself, that he deserves to be there. Both characters come by their intense pride and the equally intense accompanying inferiority complex honestly. And their extreme personalities are written in such a way that it's clear why they're such a good match for each other and why they'd like each other to begin with, even while those same personality traits are continuously complicating their relationship. That's one of my favorite tricks to see rom-com writers employ, when the thing that perpetually pushes our heroes apart is the same thing that drew them together in the first place, it makes both the conflict and romance feel organically intertwined. That, in turn, allows for the character's feelings to develop in a compelling way without continually begging the question of why don't they just screw already? And while dodging that question isn't necessary to make a rom-com funny, it certainly helps 
the audience to maintain a sense of levity and take the romance more seriously when it's not constantly needling at the back of their minds. There's a careful balance that needs to be maintained in order to make love stories work, and in some ways I think comedies have it harder because their narrative goals are kind of paradoxical. We have to laugh at the characters, mock their ineptitude, their foibles, and their arrogance, while still believing in their feelings and rooting for them to get what they want in the end. Go too far in one direction and it just feels sappy and boring, go too far in the other and you just hate them and want to see them suffer. It's a very specific reaction that these shows aim to elicit from their viewers, and it requires some very precise chemistry to achieve. At the very least, you need that between the two romantic leads, but ideally you want to have it between all of your characters. And I think Kaguya-sama does a brilliant job of that. Everyone serves a purpose in making its central conceit, the absurd scheming that goes on between Miyuki and Kaguya, as entertaining as possible. As of this writing, the show is about to add a new element to the mix. The end of episode 5 teased us with a glimpse of Yu Ishigami, the student council treasurer, who could throw off the cast balance. But from what I've read of the manga, without spoiling things, he really only adds to the humor of the series' character dynamics with his, uh, distinctive personality and way of viewing the world. In a sense, he's kind of a perfect counterpart to Chika. Thus far, each episode of Kaguya-sama Love is War has had me in hysterics, and it seems to have everything it needs in place to keep that up for the rest of the season. If you're not watching it yet, I hope this video has convinced you to give it a shot, and if you are, I hope this has helped you to appreciate it just a little bit more. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Let me know in the comments below which waifu or husbando you'd most like to spend it with, and while you're down there, I sure would appreciate it if you'd show the like and subscribe button some love, too, if you know what I mean. Also, I'm going to be presenting an award at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards on Twitch this Saturday, so please tune in for that. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement.